Hi there, it's Florence here. I will briefly introduce myself. I'm a computer science student from Cambridge, England and a very enthusiastic knitter. This is now the fourth episode of my knitting video podcast kind of thing, which feels really weird. It's not such a new channel anymore. Today I have lots to show. I have four finished objects, which is quite exciting. I have three work in progress pieces. And then I also have a little bit of new yarn to show, which I don't think has really been the case in most of these podcasts so far. So I should probably get into it because I might be here a while. I will speak first about what I'm wearing. Every time I post this top on Instagram or on Ravelry, I get a bunch of questions from you guys about it and it always does really well. So I know that a lot of you really like this cardigan. So it's probably exciting to hear that this is a free pattern, which as usual, like every pattern that I mention in this video will be linked in the description. So you can go check it out if you're interested in making any of these projects yourself. This pattern is the Ballerina Wrap Top by Two of Wands. It's knitted in a DK weight yarn, so it's super easy to find something in stash that's suitable for it. You can use a fingering weight with mohair, you can use a DK. Um, my sister's even knitted one in sock yarn. I have made two of this cardigan. I haven't knitted a lot of things twice, so you know it's a good pattern. Both of mine are pretty heavily modified. So the increases down the front are changed on my two versions of this cardigan, and also they both have long sleeves. If you're interested in the exact modifications that I made, um, they are, I think, mostly listed on Ravelry. They're sort of split between the two project pages for this cardigan and the black version that I knitted to wear to a maple. The front panel modifications, I think, are described in the project page for this blue version of the cardigan, whereas the sleeve modification is listed in the black version, because this sleeve is a little bit too tight for me, so I slightly adjusted it for the black version and that one fits perfectly. Despite having two of these, I think it's pretty likely I'll end up making a third. It's kind of surprising that even though I have two, neither of them are knitted in a colour or a yarn that I especially like. This one is knitted in this baby blue cashmere from Colour Mart. I got it really cheap, I think I paid like £25 for it. It was two cones of their DK weight cashmere at 150 grams per cone, and it was on sale I think. Anyway, it is very soft, softer than a lot of the other Colour Mart cashmeres that I've tried, but how do I describe this? It's soft, but it's not fluffy. Like there's no halo to it, which I've seen more in some other cashmere yarns I've tried, especially the Cardiff cashmere, I find that that really fluffs up, and though I've worn this quite a lot, it hasn't really fluffed up that much at all. Altogether though, I think it's a pretty nice yarn, and I would recommend it, especially if you do manage to get it on sale, but I don't think this colour is my colour so much. I do wear a lot of blue and green, but I think this is just a bit too blue for me. I tend to have very muted blues and greens. Colour mots like that, like you can never really tell precisely what colour you're getting until after it's already arrived, so I guess I just have to live with it. And to be fair, I do still wear this quite a lot, but since I love this cardigan design so much, I think it would be really nice to knit one up in a colour that I know I reach for more often. So, I guess now I can start talking about my finished objects. I didn't count this as all my finished objects, but before I started on them, I figured I should mention. I spoke a lot about this pouch in the last video where I had it as a finished object, however I have since sewed in the lining, so I guess now it's like finished finished. This is the Herringbone Purse by Girl Not Slicked. The pattern has just been released, I did knit this as a test knit so I was given the pattern for free, but the yarn was purchased myself. The yarn is King Cole Merino Blend DK, which is a super cheap merino blend superwash wool. Um, and the colour is Teary, which is this sort of grey cream colour with these cute little colourful flecks in it. Hopefully you can see that, it is very lovely. It's another thing I've been asked about, like I've had so many DMs asking what this yarn is. I think a lot of people are quite disappointed that it's a very cheap yarn and not something really luxurious, because I feel like these colourful flecks in a neutral base are really popular at the moment. So yes, I wanted to bring this up again because I mentioned last time that the pattern was going to include instructions for sewing the lining, and I want to be able to sort of give an overview of how I found a pattern when I show the object in my video. So obviously I've got to revise my sort of review of the pattern now that I've also sewed a lining. There's actually a printable paper pattern in it, which I haven't seen with any of the other pouches that I have sewed. They've all sort of just given measurements for the rectangle he cut out. 
which works fine too. And um, this one does say in the pattern that you can draw the pattern out yourself if you don't have a printer and it gives measurements and instructions to do that. But yes, it includes a printable pattern both for the small and the large size of the purse, bag, whatever this is. Anyway, I found the pattern to be super easy to follow and even though I'm not a very competent sewer, I don't really sew a lot, I mostly do just knit, um, I did find that it was quite straightforward and easy to do. And hopefully you can see, last time there were a lot of very ugly, wonky, but quite strong stitches holding the zip to the bag, but now they've all been covered up by the lining, which is a relief. <laughs> anyway, I'm super happy with it and very much recommend this pattern. Okay, so let's move on to some bigger finished objects. This one was a work in progress in the last video, but I now have it finished. This is the Twist Loop Top by Other Loops. I've knitted it up in the size extra small. I should have mentioned the cardigan, both of my cardigans are also knitted in a size extra small. This is a very cute ribbed camisole where the ribbing has these cool cable twists down the front. I did three of them and then bound off just a bit after the third. It has a folded collar and I cord armhole edges and it was not too slow to knit. A lot of people also mention, and I agree, when you're knitting a piece like this which has these sort of repeated design elements down it, what ends up happening is you end up really pushing yourself to reach the next one, like oh it's so nice I can just knit a little bit more and reach the next cable, and so you end up speeding through it and don't find it too much of a drag to knit. Obviously 3mm needles is going to take a while, but I didn't find it too bad. It's knitted almost exactly to pattern, however I did do just a tiny bit of waist shaping on the side. I don't know if you can see that, but I decreased out. I basically just started decreasing and carried on until the pattern matched up again. The yarn that I used for this was Drops Flora. I spoke a little bit about why I used Drops Flora in the last video, but like TLDR, TLDW. It was what I had to hand and I know it wasn't going to be the best idea right from the start but I knitted it up anyway thinking it could be used as a nice base layer in winter even if it ended up being too hot for the summer. It is definitely not a very cooling, pleasant, summery <laughs> summer top and I would suggest you put all of your effort knitting on 3mm needles into something made of a material that you actually want to wear in summer. Which I should really emphasise, I don't hate Drops Flora, it's a really great budget friendly soft jumper yarn for winter knitwear, but it's not made for summer tops, even a little bit. But the colour is really beautiful and realistically in the UK a lot of the year it's not too hot to wear a wool and alpaca top anyway, so I think I will still get quite a bit of wear out of this, even if it's not quite as much wear as I get out of my knitting roll of merino summer tops since that is my preferred summer top yarn. I'm going to show you a really small finished object next, so we'll alternate big and small I guess. This was uh, knitted yesterday and the day before, um, I think it took me like three hours in total to knit, it was really quick. This is the Sophie scarf by Petite Knit. When I first saw this pattern and I saw pictures of this scarf on Petite Knit's Instagram, I thought that I was not a small scarf person and that I would definitely not end up missing this. But a couple of days ago there was some stressful stuff going on and I just felt this need to knit something small that I could finish quickly um, and that was pretty simple and this pattern just seemed like exactly the thing. I have weighed this scarf and it weighs 14 grams. So that's really not a lot of yarn. This is knitted in alpaca silk, alpaca silka from Samus Garn. I think the colour is dusty blue, it'll be listed on Ravelry anyway. This wasn't scrap yarn, I actually have a jumper quantity of this stuff, I'm just super unsure what I want to do with it. I was thinking about maybe knitting up a camisole and then with the leftover making some more of the naked knit bralettes and bras because this yarn is super super soft. If you ever touch these type of alpaca silk yarns you'll know what I mean, they just feel lovely. I know Drops have a more budget friendly version of this yarn and that is also super soft and really lovely and I've knitted a little scarf out of that before too. So I didn't follow the pattern precisely, I would guess that this is probably slightly longer than the small version of the scarf, 
but I didn't do so many increases. So I don't want to give away everything about the pattern, but it's knitted from one end to the other and you sort of increase and then the pattern says you start decreasing right away. I didn't do that. I increased until I had 20 stitches on my needle and then I continued with no increases or decreases for a while and then I started decreasing again. The reason why I did that was because I still don't think I'm much of a tiny scarf person but I've seen a lot of people wearing this scarf as a sort of Alice band headscarf kind of thing on Instagram and I thought that that seemed really cute and like something that I definitely would wear so I really wanted to optimise the scarf shape for that. So I've made it a little bit narrower than it's supposed to be and also like exactly the right length to go around my head and tie and have a cute little tail at the end after the knot. I'm not sure precisely how long this is, I haven't measured it, I probably should have, um, I'm very sorry. Also I've had some questions, um, so I will say I think this pattern is supposed to be knitted with a DK weight yarn um, on 3.5mm needles Obviously this is not a GK weight yarn, this is a four ply kind of weight yarn, but I did just hold it single on the 3.5mm needles and I guess it's a little bit lighter and a little bit drapier than it would otherwise be, although it's alpaca silk, it's already going to be super drapey and pretty, um, but I don't consider that to be a problem at all. I like the final result and I have no reason to miss my identical scarf, but if I was to make another I would very happily use this same type of yarn on the same size needles. But yes, other than that increasing and maximum width thing, it's knitted exactly to pattern. I just think it's really cute, I like it a lot. And sometimes it feels good to knit a tiny project that you can get done really quickly. I think it would make a good gift for anybody you know who might want a tiny scarf to wear around their neck or in their hair. Despite saying that I would not wear a tiny scarf, um, I actually tried it on and it's like way cuter than I expected. Maybe, maybe I could wear a tiny scarf with like a white shirt or a white blouse. I think it could be really cute. And this yarn is so soft and so non-scratchy. It feels super comfortable around my neck as well. I will say I've seen people knit this scarf in all kinds of different yarn. I've seen merino versions, cashmere versions, which I think is what's listed in the pattern. I've seen the cotton merino options and they all look really good. So I think it's just an excellent way to use up any small quantity of scrap yarn. You can totally keep increasing until half your yarn is used up and then decrease and then you know that you're going to use up every bit of scrap. And so if you have like half a ball or less of yarn left over, you could definitely get one of these little scarves out of it. Let's talk about a big finished object. In the last video, this jumper was just a swatch. Think. but I have since finished it. This is my own pattern which should be releasing really soon. It will be a free pattern of course um, and I think hopefully by the time the next video podcast is released this pattern will be out and there is an accompanying video on my channel where I talk and show the entire process of this jumper from beginning to end. So it's aimed at sort of first time misses if you've never knitted anything before, I'm convinced you can make this jumper and I'm going to try my best to help people through it. So I spoke a little about this swatch and my plans in the last episode. Basically, I have knitted this jumper before when I wrote the pattern. I did a grey and white striped sample, which I showed in the first episode of this podcast. And I mentioned that when I was wearing it, the lack of short row neck shaping did bother me a little bit. I made a deliberate choice to not include short row neck shaping because it was intended to be a first ever knitting pattern for people to try and especially because short row neck shaping shows up so high up on a jumper right near the neck, it's one of the first things you end up doing and so I thought it could seem quite intimidating. However, I wanted this pattern to also be one that someone who's not a first time knitter could reach for because it's free and it's easy to adapt and so I really wanted to include a short row neck shaping option too. Also, some people are just really good at trying crafts for the first time, and so I'm sure a lot of beginners could do short row neck shaping with no problems and might want to attempt it. So I wanted to write some optional short rows and include in the pattern, and I decided to knit a second sample to test out my short rows, and I also did a folded collar, which the last version did not have. It probably needs a little bit of elastic in the neckline, which is no big deal. 
um, but that's what it looks like. This jumper is knitted in Tenen by Noro. It's a very beautiful yarn which has a lot of variation both in colour and in texture. Sometimes it has these sort of very chunky, barely spun, fluffy woolen bits, and sometimes it's very thin and tightly spun. And I know that might bother some people, but I really enjoyed knitting with it, and I found that adding a strand of mohair really helped even out the fabric a little bit, and just prevented it from being too thin and see-through during the occasional bits where the yarn does get very thin. I don't know precisely how much I used for this jumper, um, partly because I think my remaining tenon, I've had this stuff for years and it's been caked up for a long time, but I think my remaining tenon has been like scattered around the house a bit, so I can't really weigh what's left. I guess I could weigh this and do some maths on how much the tenon weighs and how much the mohair weighs and figure out precisely how much I used. But I think I bought four hanks of the tenon originally and I have quite a bit left, maybe not a whole hank, maybe. I don't know exactly, probably roughly one left, and I think I might use it to make some cute winter fingerless gloves for my sister or for myself, I think it would look really nice for that. I think this type of yarn really suits patterns like this where there's very little going on, there's no cables, there isn't any lace, it's just plain stockinette, and it brings a little bit of interest to the fabric. The yarn is, I think, 50% wool, 25% alpaca and 25% silk, although I might be wrong on that, and I think it runs 250 meters per 100 grams. The hanks are 100 grams. I don't know where you can buy it in the UK, I'm not sure if it's been discontinued. I got it from Laughing Hens, but I don't think they stock it anymore, but I think I did see some on eBay, so you could maybe find it there if you wanted to try it out. I just thought that it contrasted really nicely with my grey and white striped sample to show a completely different look that you can get while using the same pattern. I know that this is the kind of jumper that I just wear so much. So in the winter, as soon as it cools down enough to wear this, it's going to be one of my absolute go-to favourite jumpers for sure. This is a pattern for Aran Weight yarn. It was originally written for Drops in a Pool, but I wanted to at least try something that's more worsted weight, held with mohair. I actually don't know what I would even describe this yarn weight as because it is so variable, but I did swatch a neat gauge for this with it held with mohair. So it has, I want to say, a 16 stitch gauge, and so it is a really fast knit. This is the second size, size B, and both this one and my original grey striped sample took four days to knit. So it's super fast. Admittedly, I did knit for a few hours on it each day, I think. Um, so if you are someone who sort of sits down and knits for an hour or a half hour before bed, it would take you a bit longer, but it's definitely a fast project, which is something that I thought was really important for a first knit because you get that sort of instant gratification of getting a piece that you really like and hopefully that will motivate you to try knitting something else. It's very lucky that I'm somebody who likes my sleeves very long because I always overestimate how long I need to knit the sleeves before they grow with blocking. I didn't measure these. I think the measurement in the pattern is okay. I did not measure this, I just tried it on and when it was like almost long enough for my taste, I stopped and it grew a lot with blocking and now the sleeves are like super long and go over my hands, which is fine. I like a super long sleeve, so that works for me. But yes, perhaps if you're knitting with this yarn combination, be slightly more aware of how much it does grow. But it's a jumper that I really like and I'm really proud of. And I think the next video on this channel will be my Oh, it's like an hour and a half long, <laughs> but maybe longer. But it will be my sort of breakdown on how to make this jumper in loads of detail. It starts with like how to knit and how to purl, and it ends with this jumper with short rows and a folded neckline and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Well, that is three finished objects showed, so I have one more to go. This was also a work in progress in the last video. These are the Keisler socks from 52 Weeks of Socks. I finished both of them. I mentioned last time that the big modification that I made from the original pattern is the smaller size was supposed to be 72 stitches around, and I did one fewer pattern repeat, so this is 60 stitches around. I normally knit a 64 stitch sock on 2.5mm needles, this was on 2.5mm needles, so this sock is a little bit smaller than some of my others, but it still fits comfortably. 
Other than that, it's knit pretty much exactly to pattern. So it has this very pretty sort of ribbed pattern where there's lace on alternating ribs and it has a slip stitch heel, which I actually took the time to do properly rather than just throwing in a short row heel like I normally do. They have been worn, so if they look a little bit misshapen and sad, that would be the reason why. And they are knitted in Drops Nord. It's very soft. I don't know how to describe it, like, it's a different kind of soft to the Phil Colonna Arbetta that I used to knit the Erica socks from 52 Weeks of Socks, which I showed in the last video. I would describe the Arvetta, which is a superwash, merino and nylon blend, as being a sort of silky softness, whereas this, which is an alpaca, wool and nylon blend, is more of a fluffy softness. Like, it has these big long, I guess, alpaca fibres coming off it, and it's a really beautiful yarn. It does also feel quite sort of plush compared to a lot of other sock yarns I've tried. I guess it's probably slightly thicker, which I really enjoy, especially since I do tend to knit socks on 2.5mm needles rather than 2.25mm needles, which I know a lot of people use. So I do like a sock yarn which has like a bit of something to it, you know? This colour, I don't remember the name, it might be light pearl grey, light grey. It's listed as different names on different sites, um, so it's not super clear cut. And yeah, I just think it's a really classic, cute sock that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of. Oh, the other change I made to the pattern, which I should mention, is that the original pattern has, like, different ways of knitting each sock in the pair. I think to make them symmetrical, I didn't really read through it that well. I knitted one sock and then I didn't want to carry the book around with me and I was like, well, I remember how I made this sock and I think it would look fine if I just had two socks that were the same. So for the second sock, I just knitted exactly the same as the first sock. So I think it was supposed to be sort of changed slightly so that the rib details are symmetrical, but I, I didn't do that. This is just two identical socks. So I almost managed to stick to the pattern, just not quite. Go get my big bag of whips because my first whip is another sock from 52 Weeks of Socks. And so it kind of makes sense to show it next. I'll see if I can show this on camera. It looks like that. This is the Una Ona sock from 52 Weeks of Socks. I'm afraid I don't remember the designer name right now, but as usual, this pattern will be linked in the description on Ravelry. I think you can buy all of the 52 Weeks of Socks patterns individually. So if you don't want to buy the whole book and you just want to buy one or two of the patterns, I think that is something that you can do. So I actually cast this sock on before. I originally cast it on with the Drops Nord that I used to make the Keisler socks um, and I got probably about this far with it and then I pulled open the lace and I was like, I don't even think that looks like anything, it just sort of looks like a confused mess. Um, I'm not seeing like pretty lace in it and so I ripped it out. But every time I see this sock on Instagram or on Ravelry, I just think, wow, that looks really, really pretty, like this all over lace, really lovely sock. And so I feel like if I just stick with it, it will end up looking pretty, so I'm going to give it another go. I am knitting this on 2.5mm needles, I believe the pattern calls for 2.25mm needles. It's a, I want to say 64 stitch sock, and therefore I think that it will fit me on 2.5mm needles. I'm probably between the sizes, the smaller sock and the larger sock. Each sock in 52 weeks of socks has two different size options, and I've knitted the smaller one mostly out of laziness so far. Um, so I guess doing it with a slightly larger needle will give me something in between the two. The yarn that I'm using is, this is from West Yorkshire Spinners. West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply and the colour is Marshmallow, which is like barely even a cream, like we are really heading into true white territory here, which seems like a great way to get very dirty socks very quickly. These are not going to stay this white for a long time. I'm still not completely convinced by the lace pattern. I'm wondering if maybe I've just like picked a bad colour or maybe I really do need to finish the sock that has my 2.25mm needles on it so that I free them and can knit this on a needle size that's actually specified in the pattern. But I'll stick with it for a bit and see how it goes. I think I will end up knitting it a little bit shorter in the pattern. I have mentioned before, I think the slightly shorter socks are super cute. I was looking through 52 weeks of socks to try and decide what to make, and I just kept on going back to the Erica sock that was the first sock that I knitted from the book and thinking, oh, it's really cute. 
I would really like another pair of those. So that's the sort of sock that draws me in, and I think perhaps my next sock from the book will be a second Erica sock rather than one of the other 49 sock patterns in the book. I was hoping that this yarn would be a little bit more hard wearing, so I could maybe wear it inside Doc Martens, but honestly this colour probably negates that, like I've got to be a little bit careful with what I wear this with so that it doesn't get ruined. I should really get myself some dark coloured sock yarn and knit myself some dark coloured socks on 2.25mm needles to wear inside Dot Martin this winter. But I think I will like power through this and finish it since I'm not really sure what I'd use this colour of yarn for anyway since it is so white. I think I bought it originally with the intention of knitting a striped sock so the toe and heel was going to be green. I have this same yarn in the colour Hydrangea which is just slightly too vibrant of a green for my taste. So I figured that striping together the darker but too vibrant green with the bright, easy to get dirty white would give an overall look that's a little bit less green and a bit more stain resistant. Or at least stains might be less noticeable on a striped sock. But the thing is, I just really enjoy my socks as something that's a little bit more complicated. I know I love those jumpers that are just miles of stockinette and that's what I reach for and so with socks it's nice to satisfy my occasional urge to do legs or cables or something that's a little bit more fancy. And so a striped sock just isn't speaking to me right now. Maybe eventually. I think I'll definitely have enough left for, of this yarn after knitting this pair of socks to make a striped pair as well. Okay, uh, next work in progress. I showed this in the last video too. This is my sweater number 15 by My Favourite Things Knitwear and this has been on the needles for well over a year now. It's been abandoned in this state and in the last video I showed it and said that I was making a commitment to get it back on the needles and to figure out where I was in the pattern and get going again by this episode, which I have successfully done. I actually spent quite a lot of time on this last night and I feel like I've made no progress. Like probably one cable worth of progress. But you can see I've got my nice C-knit bamboo needles in it now so it's something I can just pick up and it's something I will want to finish because I have another jumper I want to knit on 4.5mm needles and so I've got to get this done so I can use those needles for something else. That's something I quite enjoy about owning just one set of interchangeable needles that I have to finish one project on a certain size needle before I can start something else. So even though I tend to have two or three things going at once, there's a limit on how many new projects I can cast on. This is Knitted In, drops Flora in the shade White Fog and drops Kid Silk in the shade Light Beige, I think. So these two yarns are pretty different colours, but they actually go together really cohesively. I feel like the silk core of the beige kid silk is actually quite similar in colour to the white fog flora and that the beige colour comes more from the halo of beige fluff. So actually when you knit with the two strands held together it's actually very hard to make out the silk thread of the mohair. It just more gives this sort of very light beigey grey foggy halo to the whole jumper which is really pretty. I was a little bit worried that using two colours that are so different would be too busy and hide all of the cables, but actually I think it's just fine. So yes, hopefully uh, my goal on finishing this for the next episode will be to complete the body. I think that's reasonable, I can do that. This is also definitely going to need elastic in the collar, but I think I have now three or four jumpers that pretty urgently need elastic in the collar, so at some point I should sit down and just do a great long session of elasticating all of my collars to make them sit nicely. And yes, it's a lovely pattern, it's a really pretty jumper with these beautiful cable increases and it has more of these lovely cable increases here around the collar, sort of go around the neck. It's just so beautiful, it's a lovely pattern and I really do want to wear it so I should probably get on with it. I was just amazed at how much slower it is to knit than a stockinette jumper because you are doing ribbing essentially, like knit six, purl three, and I especially struggle with that when the number of knits and the number of purls and the ribbing is not the same. It just, it requires so much more brain power for me. Anyway, there's not actually much progress to show, I sort of was just showing that I did do what I said I'd do and I did get it back on the needles and I've made a little bit of progress. I put it back on the needles last night, so I guess I can't really expect to have made a huge amount of progress, but I'm, I'm happy with that. Next work in progress. There's not really much to show, 
The worst part is I post this on Instagram in a much greater state of completion. As you can probably see from my <laughs> slightly malformed ball of yarn, this has been frogged and I've just cast it back on again. So where do I start with this? I've mentioned before that in Cambridge we don't have like a local yarn shop that I really love that does a lot of the yarn that I enjoy knitting with. But during the summer I don't live in Cambridge, I live in the countryside outside Cambridge in my like family home which is where I am now. So yeah I live in college in a house during term time but right now I'm in the middle of nowhere. And so we definitely don't have a local yarn shop here. But I was speaking to another knitter on Instagram. I think that their username is T and Stitches. They make a lot of really lovely stuff. And I saw in their bio, they said they're from Suffolk. And I also live in Suffolk. So I was like, hi, I'm from the same area as you. And when we were talking, they mentioned that there is a yarn shop that they really like that's local to them. And it's in, coincidentally, the town where my grandparents live which is like half an hour away from here. So I made a, a trip, uh, I went to go see my grandparents and I also dropped in at this yarn shop which is called Yarn Works in Hadley. I had no idea that there was a lovely, lovely yarn shop in Hadley. I wouldn't have guessed it to be honest, but it was amazing. It's mostly hand dyed yarn and you can probably tell I don't exactly use a huge amount of hand dyed yarn. I am turning 22 in like a month so it's a while till my birthday but um my parents were like oh we really want to get you some yarn for your birthday you should choose something while you're at yarn works and so i looked around and i was really tempted by a lot of their hand dyed yarn it was really really beautiful and especially the muted variegated blue green beigey colors i thought they were lovely the ones that i was especially looking at the dye indie dyeing company that i think creates the colors that i like the most were the Irish artisan yarns, hand dyed yarns. They are stunning. But each skein was like 360 meters. And I wanted to knit a camisole on it, but I used like 420 meters to knit a camisole normally. And so it's just so infuriatingly close to being one skein that I couldn't bring myself to buy two. So I think I will save up at some point and I will buy a jumper quantity of one of the really pretty Irish artisan yarns but in the meantime Yarnworks also had knitting for Olive which is very dangerous for me because if I am knitting something you probably noticed all of my knits are either drops or knitting for Olive in general there are obvious exceptions but I feel like drops is when I'm broke and I need to knit a certain piece but I can't afford the yarn for it and then I buy drops but if I have a little bit more money I almost always go for knitting for Olive yarns um, I think they have a stunning colour selection, just the most beautiful colours, exactly the type of colours that I enjoy wearing. I don't know how many beiges and browns they have, but they have like six options for a muted blue colour, which just, wow, most other companies don't even have one. And their mohair is very soft. I've said before that I find it does shed quite a lot, but it does also feel lovely. I don't find it scratchy at all. Their merino is just the right balance between wear and well, but also being soft against the skin. I just generally really enjoy a lot of their yarn. So of course, for my birthday, I wanted to get some more knitting for olive yarn. So I got two skeins of this. I think the color is called Soil, which is not very elegant. Like it, the vibe is not so great, but okay. And I wanted to make a camisole. My parents said that I should like take the yarn straight away so I can knit pieces to wear on my birthday. Um, and I decided that I was going to self-draft a camisole because I have a lot of ribbed camisoles and I wanted to knit camisole and stockinette, which is inherently a bit more fiddly because there's not that kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Like, you know, when you're wearing ribbing and it just sucks in and like shapes perfectly to fit your body. Um, stockinette doesn't do that so it's been a bit more fiddly to figure out the exact stitch counts that I want the exact amount of negative ease that I want to create a camisole that fits me perfectly thus the ripping bag um, but this is the top edge it's the neck edge it's going to sit like here it has a folded hem I really wanted to do a top with a bunch of folded hems on it because I thought they would look really pretty like if I'm going to make a stockinette top, I should commit to the stockinette and do stockinette everywhere. So that, that is the vision. So this is just going to be all stockinette on three millimeter needles. 
with double knitted straps and folded hems. And that's all I have to show for now. I am not probably planning, even if this is successful, on writing it up into a pattern, just because I feel like a top like this in stockinette is so personal to your own body measurements. My bust measurement is not going to be the same as the bust measurement of someone else with the same size waist as me, and so if I want to make a top that's fitted all the way down, the construction is going to have to vary pretty significantly between us, and you can't really grade one size per bust size because there are so many different waist sizes associated with that. So this is probably just going to be a one-off piece for my own wardrobe, which is fine and I'm still very excited for it. So those two skeins of the soil merino, they were not the only Knitting for Olive birthday yarns that I got at Yarnworks. I also got these. The merino colour is marzipan and the mohair colour is putty. I got four of each. Um, you can see the colours match really beautifully. I really wanted to do fennel seed um, for a jumper quantity of yarn, but they only had the merino, didn't have mohair, and I was holding up the fennel seed merino with the dusty artichoke mohair and trying to figure out if it would work, but it just wasn't quite what I wanted. So I instead picked these colours out, which, I mean, you know me, these are the colours I like wearing the most, so it's a good option for a really special piece, I guess. I know that I reach for my knitting for olive, yarn clothing more than any other clothing made from yarn from different brands so I wanted to create something that is really easily styled. So my game plan for my four skeins of each of these, because I can make a jumper out of four skeins of each, my Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl was done with four skeins of each, but this time I wanted to do another April cardigan. I've knitted an April cardigan before in Drops Bora and Kid Silk I think. And it's a little bit scratchy because the drops kid silk is significantly less soft than other mohairs. But I still wear that cardigan all the time. Every time I post it on Instagram, it does really well. People really like it. And also, I really wanted to do a version with a double knitted button band. So that's the game plan. These lovely yarns are going to become another April cardigan. I sort of have a time limit on it because I want it done by my birthday. So over the next month or so, I'm going to be knitting that up. And I'm really excited. I have some little sort of shell buttons, which I think would look beautiful with this yarn. I did actually purchase some yarn myself as well, I know this doesn't tend to happen. I've seen a lot of people speaking about the drop sale on Wool Warehouse. I don't think it's a Wool Warehouse exclusive thing, um, I think all drops vendors have the same sale, but it's 40% off most of their yarns which include any kind of alpaca content, which is quite a good deal, like 40% off yarn that's already cheaper than any other Natural fibre yarn, really, leads to some very, very cheap yarn. So I bought two different yarns um, from Wool Warehouse. I should say, I don't typically buy drops yarn from Wool Warehouse. My little recommendation, if you live in the UK, is Purple Sheep Yarn. They often have some colours out of stock, however, they deliver next day. Like, if you spend £25, I think, you get free delivery. And it's not called next day delivery, but I have purchased a lot of yarn from that website and it's never once taken longer than a day to reach me, unless the next day was a Sunday. So yes, like, it's a really, really fast shipping website. And also I think their prices are really good. So that's my suggestion if you want to get any drops yarn. Anyway, I got two different things. Firstly, I got two skeins of Drops Nord. This colour is Fog, I think. It never says, it just has the colour number. The colour number is 8, but I think it's called Fog. It's definitely a darker and more vibrant blue than I was expecting from the pictures, but basically I bought two of these to make a pair of socks because these were £1.45 each. I think the non sort of mild colours are a pound forty, and £2.80 for a pair of hand knitted socks is an excellent, excellent deal. Like, I happily pay eight to ten pounds for a sock's worth of yarn, and if it's hand dyed, you're paying 25, so two pounds 90 is a good price. I didn't want to buy loads because, like, how fast do I really knit socks? Like, one every couple of weeks, maybe, and so I don't need tons of sock yarn, but I thought it'd be nice to pick up one extra sock quantity of yarn. The other thing that I bought, I mentioned that I was thinking about buying in the last podcast, and I'm glad I waited until the 40% off sale suddenly sprung up. This is Drops Soft Tweed Mix, 
colour is again number eight. I think this one is called Peppercorn. Hopefully you can see it has these really pretty little tweedy bits in it. It is 50% wool, 25% alpaca, 25% viscose. And it's very soft, it feels very good, and I would say that it's a DK weight yarn. I got this yarn because I mentioned that my knit skirt is currently in testing, and it's been a more complicated test knit than I was anticipating. I really thought that it's like a pretty simple pattern and people would just speed through it, but people have been having issues with it, and I've had to make some adjustments to the sizing, which have been quite significant, and so I wanted to knit up another sample for myself as well. Plus, I mentioned that I wanted another skirt in a dark colour to wear with black tights in the winter, because like a wool skirt just makes sense, right? Like, people like wool skirts, I like wool skirts. I figured a little sort of pleated wool dark coloured mini skirt would be something I'd reach for a lot. I didn't have any yarn at the time, so I did get some of this drops soft tweed. I've since updated the sizing, I have my pattern with the new sizing written in it, and so pretty soon I guess I will go ahead and cast on another one of these skirts. I bought eight of these, which is more than I need for the skirt, I think. But I'm thinking that since I will have some left over, I could knit another matching bralette, or I thought I may even continue the bralette on and make it a little bit longer, so I have a matching camisole. I was going to knit the simple bralette by Naked Knit, which I already have in a beige taupe colour to match my taupe skirt. So I guess both of my skirts will have a matching Naked Knit simple bralette. And I figured if I knit a little black camisole and then I have my little black skirt and I wear them together, it's going to be sort of like the little black dress kind of vibe, but also you can use the pieces separately, which will make them more versatile. So yes, as much as I hate knitting in black, and this isn't black, right? Like they do make a darker colour of this yarn, I think. This is the second darkest, um, but it's still dark enough that it's going to be a bit of a miserable experience. But I think it will be worth it for the finished product. Ah, oh, that was a lot. I bought a lot of yarn. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I will be back again in two, three weeks in another podcast. But additionally, there will be my step-by-step -step sweater tutorial pattern video before then as well as a written pattern so I will see you before the next podcast which is very exciting just gonna get the last bit of editing done and then we're good to go thank you very much for watching and goodbye